things are looking up, that's okay. Let's go to the video. Oh, hey. Okay, so this week's video is just looking at the concepts of sterility and sterilization and the sterility test, which is a key quality control release test for aseptically produced pharmaceutical products. Okay, so first of all, why do some products have to be sterile? The reason is, is due to their route of administration. So if we could take products or certain products like protonaceous products orally, that would be great. But they are destroyed by the gastrointestinal fluid. So certain medicines have to be um, injected or go through the spinal cord or through the skin. And these products need to be sterile pharmaceutical products. So what is sterility? Well, there's different definitions of sterility, but in this context, sterility is the absence of viable microorganisms. And it's an absolute term. So there is no such thing as partially sterile, almost sterile, ever so slightly sterile. It is either sterile or it is not sterile. And the process of creating something that's sterile requires sterilization. So this could be a physical procedure such as filtration, or it could be a chemical procedure, or it could be a different kind of physical procedure like the application of heat. And sterilization needs to be able to destroy all types of microorganisms, even the most resistant bacterial endospores. So we've got these different processes of sterilization, but with aseptic filling, we can't sterilize the medicine in its final container. So this is the sterile product. We won't be able to blast it with some kind of sterilization method. We would have to make sure that all the parts going to create the medicine are themselves sterile. So sterile vessels, sterile filter product, depyrogenated vials, sterile stoppers, but the act of dispensing the medicine, if something was to fall in at that point, then we have a serious problem. And sterilization is a unnatural condition. So you go around the world, you can find bacteria at the edge of volcanoes. You can go to Antarctica and you can dig down and you can still recover microorganisms. So it's a transitory, unnatural state. The sterility test is a fundamental release test and it's a regulatory requirement for all aseptically filled medicines and also some terminally sterilized products as well. And it's a test that's based on culture media or rapid microbiological methods. Most are undertaken using culture media as described in the pharmacopoeia. And you can see the types of culture media on the slide there with my hand holding a bottle of broth. And there's two methods. One is membrane filtration where the product is filtered and the product goes through a membrane filter and the idea is you're trapping bacteria on the filter face. Direct inoculation is moving a portion of product into broth. So the broths are tryptone soya broth, otherwise known as soya bean casein digest medium. And this is incubated at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And it's designed to pick up aerobic bacteria and fungi. The other medium is fluid thioglycolate broth. And this is designed to pick up both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria 
at a higher temperature of 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. And these broths are incubated for 14 days and the idea is to be able to get low levels of microorganisms and get those to reproduce. They reproduce by binary fission and you eventually get sufficient cell mass that you can see visible turbidity. And if you can see visible turbidity, it's a failure. You've got a non-sterile product. And it's a destructive test because you're taking items from the batch. So the member filtration apparatus looks something like that. And it's also an important thing when you're putting the uh, products through and you're trying to trap the microorganisms that you also apply rinse solution so you can rinse away any product residues that might be inhibitory to microbial recovery. The direct inoculation test is simpler. You're transferring portion of the product into media. Um, but it can be um, more challenging and it's not method of choice. But freeze-dried products, for example, would need to go through the direct inoculation test more often than not. Sterility test is not the only measure of sterility assurance and it has its limitations, but we can make the test more accurate by making sure we take um, samples from the start, from the middle, and from the end of the batch. We can then also make sure that the other samples taken are equidistant. So essentially we're ensuring that every few hundred vials we take another sample. Da -da 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 -da. And also if we have to do an intervention then we need to make sure that we're taking vials close to that intervention. And if we do another practice like, let's say it's a lophalized product, and we're using different freeze dryers, then we need to take um, samples for sterility testing from both freeze dryers, because they're undergoing different processes. Freeze dry, one freeze dryer might fail, the other might pass. And I said also we've got these rapid methods emerging, um, which can improve detection and recovery of microorganisms, and that represents a fairly exciting field. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to get across. Um, I wanted to emphasise uh, what is sterility, the importance of sterilisation, and this thing called the sterility test. So, I'm Tim Sandal. Thank you for watching this video and I'll be back with you with another video next week. See you later.